Hello, everyone. I just wanted to share something with you. I was thinking, I was actually looking over my life and I was speaking with my brother and we were comparing stories and we were just thinking about things that happened in our life and things that affected our presence. So I just wanted to share some things with you and I hope that someone will be blessed or at least someone will know that they are not the only one who is going through something. So we, I, what I noticed is that there is um, a negative cycle or a spirit of oppression on my life and on the life of my, well, my mother's children, my brother and myself, because I started to look over our relationships and I noticed that my brother was in a relationship for on and off for since he was a teenager. So I want to say a good 20 years almost since he was a teenager on and off with this person that was just so bad for him. And um, I'm not saying that he never did anything that was wrong because we all have our faults. But she was just really, really, really bad for him and um, abusive, um, emotionally abusive. And because my brother, he's the person, he has a very soft heart. My mother, he was, he was the baby. So he is, he has a soft heart as just his personality. And I think this person saw this and took advantage of this. And so many people came to me and said to me, you need to do something about this person there. Actually, they asked me to punch her in the face. This was years ago though, because they said that she was so bad for him and the things she would do to him, stand him up and just, he would go, we live um, in New York city. He would go all the way to where she lived to upstate New York and she would stand him up. And it was just so many things going on and people would come back and tell me, but I can't control his life. So I would tell him, I would advise him and speak with him. But at that point we would just butt heads because, you know, he felt the way he felt and I felt the way I felt. So we would just butt heads. But fast forward to today, we were talking and we realized that he went through so much to where he became a, an alcoholic because of that situation, because he went up uh, where she lived to live with her because they had kids together. So he went up there to help with the kids. And the relationship just was so bad to the point where he started drinking and he started drinking. And because he was trying to fill a void and he was drinking because he was lonely and then he was kind of embarrassed to come back home because he he had gone up there and it was a lot going on. So fast forward to today to where he's trying to pull himself and he was very, 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 very talented young man. He very good writer. Um, he was a good, good boy. He would do things to help my mother do things to help me. Just, just a person with a good heart and he had a good mind for business. He was just very motivated and he was a good motivator. So if you had someone that was down and they did not feel good about themselves, he knew what to say to make you feel better. But now today he's a person who doesn't feel that he's worthy because of everything that he went through. He doesn't feel that he's worthy to even be on this earth sometime himself. And now I have to pull him up. Whereas he used to pull others up and he's just so down on himself because he never thought that he would be in this place struggling with, um, uh, drinking and he'll, he'll, he'll stop drinking and then he'll feel bad and he'll drink another beer and it leads to another beer and another beer. So he'll have to go to detox and then come out. And so he's struggling with that. And he told me, he said, no one wants to be like this. You know, and he told me he just feels so bad about himself because he didn't used to be like this. He never thought that he would be in a place where he would be so weak. And I just let him know that it's okay. Everybody needs help at some point. So I, I always talk to him, but I realize now that he was in 
an oppressive relationship, which is the same with my mother. My mother was in a, an oppressive relationship with her mother where she was her father's favorite. And her father uh, worked on a he worked on a navy ship, I believe, and he would when he would come um when the ship would dock, he would come home and always bring her gifts. And her mother told him, "Do not bring her any more gifts. Do not bring her any dolls, and do not." So she ripped that relationship. She tried to rip that relationship from my mother, and she tried to oppress her in every way that she could because she saw that she was the father's favorite and that stuck with my mother and my mother to this day will not try much. She'll, she'll help us out. And my mother has a big heart, but she doesn't feel like she can achieve anything. She was oppressed for so long by her own mother who was always telling her that she always, was always showing her by demonstration that she wasn't worth anything or no one would ever think she was worth anything. And it, spilled over into her life. So that attached to, and, and then it tries to spill over, it spilled over into our lives. So when my brother was in this uh, oppressive relationship, and then I realized that the marriage that I've been in since 2008 has been oppressive. And while, while like I, I like, I always say it's not always just one person, but it takes two, of course, you know, for there to be problems, but it's oppressive because I used to be, I used to feel very, I used to feel good about myself. I don't want to say that I thought I was the best thing in the world, but I at least felt that I was intelligent. I graduated college. I got my own apartment. I go to work every day. I went to further my education. I thought I was a productive member of society. And, um, I get into a marriage where the person seems nice, but I think they feel bad about themselves or they felt bad about themselves or whatever, you know, because for some of the stories that they told me, people never really made them feel good about themselves. So maybe they were just paying it forward. I don't know what it was, but their relationship was oppressive to the point where the person, and I say was because it's gotten much better since I prayed and fasted and and went after, you know, certain spirits and, and, and certain negative patterns that I realized were going on. And because I didn't realize they were going on, it would just happen all the time. And there was nothing I can do about it because of the fact that this person had me to the point where they could just do one thing and it would mess up my entire day to the point where I had to live every day on the edge because I'm wondering what are they going to do today to upset me? What are they going to do today to disappoint me? And so I just always lived on the edge. I could never really be happy. Once um, we had children, I would oh, oh, yeah, once we had children, I would sometimes snap at the children because I was angry with the person or something they did to hurt me. And this person was controlling so much of my life. And I lost so much of my self-esteem and my self, um, my self-worth and my identity from being in the relationship because they would do stuff to me and they would not give me enough money for towards food, um, for the rent or whatever. And then when I ask them for more, they tell me that I'm, I'm materialistic and I'm not grateful, but when I'm paying more than half the rent and we're both going out to work every day and I'm paying for all of the food and the kids and everything, and you're giving me less than much less than half the rent. I don't maybe like 25% of the rent and I'm paying the other 75. I don't think it's a crime for me to ask more, but they would always make me feel and tell me I'm ungrateful. And if I leave them, no one's going to want me because I have an attitude and no one will stay with me and they're the best person for me. And they would tell me this constantly and they would try and, and they would try, I guess I, 
I didn't realize what was happening, but little by little, the self-esteem I have was being beaten out of me. Everything that I thought I could achieve in life was being beaten out of me because of the fact of what they were saying to me. And then it, it, it came to the point where I never even tried to do anything in life. I never tried to reach any goals. I didn't have any goals. My only goal was to get through the day without them disappointing me or get through the day without them doing something to hurt me. Because once they did something to hurt me, I didn't want to eat. I couldn't think I couldn't function. And all the gifts that God had given me, just like all the gifts that God gave my brother or my mother weren't being used because we were so busy fighting in our relationships or being oppressed by the people who were supposed to love us. And so I noticed that there was a negative pattern of oppression in my life. And that's how things work. So I had to realize that because of the spirit of oppression that's in my bloodline, that, that um, happened with the people that are in my family line, it fights me as well. So it made sure that I got into a relationship and married the person who was going to treat me that way to perpetuate that cycle of oppression so that I could never reach my full potential. And it may, and the spirit made sure that my brother got into a relationship with someone that would tear him down so that he would never reach his full potential. And the same thing with my mother. And I noticed the cycle, but I thank God for prayer. And I thank God for a relationship with God because now I know what it is and I can pull myself up You see knowing is half the battle. And once you know, you know how to deal with it. When you think everything is going crazy and going haywire in your life and you just can't make heads or tails of what's going on, that's when it's a problem. But once you know what you're fighting against, once you understand what is going on in your situation and you understand that it's not anything that you did, that is something that is just coming against you to make you to hold you back and to cause you to be in a state where you're stagnant, where you're confused, where you're frustrated then you're able to fight and you can fight with new vim and new vigor. So I just wanted to share this with someone just to know if you're out there and you've gone through a similar situation, you're not alone. There is help and there is hope. And it's you're going through this situation because it is something negative. It's a negative. If you look in your family line, you may see that what you are going through is not sick. It's not, um, what is the word I want to use? It's not specific to your situation. It's something that happened either in your bloodline or in your mate's bloodline. So just look at, you just want to make sure you check the history so you can understand why you're fighting the battles that you're fighting. And once you understand that, then you'll be able to go on your knees. You'll be able to fast or whatever you need to do or get the appropriate scriptures in the Bible to fight against what is fighting against you. But know that there is hope. There is definitely hope. I hope that someone was blessed. Have a blessed night. Bye bye.